Here, all winner, and uh, you have your latest all winner powered laptops right here. Yeah, that's right. So we have a clamshell laptop here running Phoenix OS. Uh, this is using our A64 quad core processor, and we have a two in one uh, device here, uh, which is using a new OS made by all winner called Double OS, uh, and that's kind of a dual system. Uh, one part is Android 6.0, and the other part is uh, Phoenix OS. Can we check it out? Yeah, Let's yeah, right no here. problem. I'll stick it here. So the double OS is um, realizing the dream of uh, two UIs in one. Yeah, right? that's right. So at the moment with a tablet, you can't really do any office or sort of productivity work. So what we want to do is combine kind of uh, tablet functionality and entertainment with light office work. So here it's kind of a familiar desktop feel. With, with all the apps right here. Yeah, and you've got your WPS if you want to do some sort of uh, office work. Um, also, this is GMS certified by Google, um, so it supports updates. Uh, also, will come with YouTube and sort of the standard Google apps. Um, so, if you want to sort of turn it back into a into a tablet, you can just either remove it from the dock, uh, and here it will prompt you to switch to Android. So, if I hit that, you'll see it's quite a fast boot into Android. Uh, and now we're into tablet mode. Nice. Um, That's regular. Uh What's it called? Uh, a vanilla Android experience, right? Yeah, this is Marshmallow on here. Uh, so this is 6.0. And this the, the UI looks like a regular Yeah, just like stock Android kind of experience on there. Uh, and then if you hit the system mode, uh, now we'll be switching back into the, the Phoenix OS. Which is also triggered by automatically when yeah, you Yeah, which in. is also triggered by the dock. Um, so if I turn it back into the tablet mode, and then I put it in its dock, it'll now, it'll now prompt me to switch it into the Phoenix OS mode. That's cool. Um, so we, we also have it on the, the machine next to this one. Uh, so these are running an Opticore A83T. This is similar to like the Surface Pro kind of device. Yeah. Uh, it can fit like a keyboard case. Nice. So you would have sort of the case and the keyboard integrated together. Uh, and it would offer the same functionality as the two-in-one device where you can switch between uh, two operating systems. Nice. So that's uh, uh, the teams at Almaner have, have been optimizing this. Yeah. And, and together in partnership with uh, Phoenix, right? Yeah, with Phoenix and we Google together. So it's RIP um, for the sort of system to allow it to switch. Uh, but obviously it's sort of Phoenix and, and Google's... Uh, Is this Andromeda OS? Is this Android? Andromeda OS, the, the, the rumored, uh, no, I'm just joking a little okay, bit. Okay. But Google is, maybe this is the future of Android, right? Because yeah. This has to be. Yeah, I think so. I think like people are migrating that Android experience uh, onto desktops more. So I think for Android, um, also the, like the multi-window support on here for Android is quite a useful feature. Yeah. So this is one of the problems with a tablet device. Obviously you don't have multi-window support, uh, but using this, you can do that. All right, uh, this, this productivity right here, you have all kinds of windows open. Yeah, if you go to here, you can have a look at the, the system information. Uh, so about the tablet, uh, and you can see sort of what, what it's running here. Um, so here's the, the all winner double OS. What does the octopus mean? That's just, uh, okay, that's just a code name. For yeah, this maybe product. it's a code name for the product. <laughs> all right. Um, and then here you can see the A83T optical processor is powering uh, this two-in-one device. All right, so that's uh, productivity. Um, this is the, f the future of productivity right here with yep. the old winner. Yeah, so like I said, that's our, our plan to kind of migrate the tablet experience uh, into sort of the office environment. Uh, also for people like students, if you want to do some schoolwork or something like that, uh, it's quite a, a useful thing. And this is uh, affordable, right? Uh, this was launched crazy affordable uh, on, Indi uh, on the Yeah, company. I mean, it was. I think it was like $79, something like that on Kickstarter. Uh, so this is uh, quite a nice design and a, a low cost kind of PC. With no touch and then we get a little bit higher when we do these kinds of yeah. things. So at the moment, if you want a touchscreen laptop, they're fairly premium. Uh, so this is kind of a, an economical solution to that. Uh, and this also has dual USB uh, and support for expandable memory. Nice, but thin and compact, light and affordable. Yeah, and like you said, it's a lot lighter than carrying around a laptop all the time. 
Um, and then if you just want to go out, maybe on a bus journey or something, you can just take the tablet part. Uh, if you're at school or in the office, obviously you can attach it to the dock. Cool. So uh, there's a lot of other things here. Yeah, there's lots of things to look at. Uh, so I, this is sort of a, a gaming tablet. The icon. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Which is potentially, oh, we'll see the, the trailer that Nintendo is going to launch very soon, but maybe it's similar to the NX. Yeah. Uh, in, in form factor where you have the, right here, it goes out, they go out, so you can have a tablet or put on the controls. Yeah, so it. maybe in the future as well, maybe more sort of games from Nintendo uh, and well-established game houses will start to be ported onto Android platform. Oh, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, I think Mario is coming out on Nintendo and things like that, so oh, yeah. I was a big fan. Something like this would be really cool to play Mario on. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's one application for Please, this Please, Nintendo, give us the games. <laughs> All right. And Sega as well. Yeah, that everybody great, actually, yeah. yeah. And Sony, welcome. How about this one? Um, so yeah, here we just have a sort of stock Android tablet. Uh, this is running on A64, uh, which is a 64-bit quad-core processor. It's a 10.1 inch, and yeah. that's probably very affordable, right? Yeah, I mean, this would probably be sub $100, sort of. Yeah, retail, even. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, those are all the tablets right here? Yeah, there's kind of a range. Um, a lot of these use our A33 processor, yeah. which is the most popular sort of Android tablet processor on the market at the moment. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a cost-effective solution. Yeah, selling, we don't know how many millions, but yeah, millions, yeah. millions and millions. Millions in volume for this. Yeah. So next year we're going to try and bring out a new chip uh, that's similar to the A33, maybe on a lower nanometer, um, and obviously carry on supporting the tablet market. Uh, that, that's obviously our target. That's what we concentrate on at All Winner. Uh, so yeah, we've got the, the roadmap for the tablet market. We're continuing to evolve those products. The low nanometer is very useful for lower power. Yeah, so the, the smaller the nanometer, obviously the less power and things like that. So also for performance, um, you can fit more on a, on a chip. Uh, so it improves the, the uh, power consumption, also improves the performance of the chip. Uh, so these are all, all benefits of uh, upgrading to that system. All right. And some uh, very cool form factors right here, this yeah, tablet. This is, more is like actually a, tablet. a Snapdragon processor inside yeah. here. So this is uh, the 8909 or 8916 Snapdragon processor. Uh, this is made by an OEM called Cube. Uh, this is the T2 device. Cool. Um, so this has sort of come out of our partnership with Qualcomm. That's, that's also very, very stable. Yeah, it's fast. quite a, the build quality is, is very nice on here. Um, so, are you helping Qualcomm to get huge success in the... Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we've got quite a lot of sort of customers signed up uh, in China. Also, for the education market, it's, it's quite a lot of demand. Uh, there's a company called Reboy that makes a lot of educational tablets in China. Uh, they're currently using the Snapdragon platform uh, with the help of Allwinner, with the Allwinner reference design. So, yeah, we are beginning to get some traction now on the Qualcomm chip. So, with your experience being the absolute leader in tablet market, yep. you have the experience to help uh, get this out to as many people as possible and there's a, the, I guess it probably affordable, uh, affordable uh, system. Yeah. You help make it affordable or so. Yeah, we also we help support the manufacturers because trying to make uh, a Qualcomm chip work in China is quite a complex process. There's a lot of documentation. Uh, so we just try to simplify that for manufacturers trying to make it easy for the next generation of sort of products to, to use Qualcomm chips. Cool. And then there's uh, all-in-one VR. That's the big, uh, it's kind of like the big hope of the industry, right? Everybody expects this to be, uh, and it's, it's Yeah, up. I mean, a lot of people are relying on VR. Uh, there's a lot of people that make graphics processors, that make memory. Obviously, VR is going to be quite demanding in those areas in the future. So there's a lot of companies that are hoping that yeah. VR is, is going to um, have a big impact. All right. So here's all the all-in-one VR uh, uh, right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the moment, the focus on these is more for video playback. Uh, we are working on a next-generation VR chip that will be able to handle maybe gaming a, a little bit better. Uh, so most of these, you can watch some 4K video or something like that. All right. Cool. Yes. And then we go around here. You have a vacuum cleaner? Yeah. So this is made by Xiaomi. Uh, that might be familiar with uh, mobile phones. 
Uh, but they do uh, they do make other products as well. Yeah. So this is a uh, sort of self. <laughs> oh, it's still Ooh, it's it. speaking. It's alive. Uh, <laughs> this is a speaking vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So it obviously has some voice command functions. So you can just sort of stick it on the floor. It'll it'll go around your room. Um, some of these actually map the area. They actually draw a sort of 3D model of the room, and then they use that map to navigate around the objects so and this to navigate. Stuff going on here. I imagine that some sensor to to detect. Some... Okay. Oh, what are you doing with me? It's saying right. Do you understand what you're saying? <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, these products. Are... You can kick the the kick the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, maybe. I think maybe this is some, um, you've just hit a wall uh, oh. sort of device to, it seems to be backing away now when nice. you press that. What's going on here? Uh, so this is a, a really interesting market right now. Uh, it's sort of Wi-Fi speakers. So this is using our R16 processor uh, for smart hardware. So we're seeing a lot of companies like Google with Google Home, Amazon with Amazon Echo, trying to sort of integrate this device into your home. Um, also sort of mesh networking several speakers together uh, so that you can sort of play a song in the kitchen you can play a song in the living room you can either choose the same track or different ch tracks and you can speak to it yeah you can speak to it so I can ask it the weather obviously it's connected via Wi-Fi uh, so if I have some question um, a little bit like uh, on nice. iOS or something you might use the Siri voice nice. control uh, are these uh, products shipping yeah, domestically. In uh, China? In China. So like I mentioned earlier, we have Chinese language support AI package at the moment. So in the future, we'd like to support, obviously, a Western language package so that we can export these uh, internationally. But at the moment, uh, our main focus is within the domestic market. What's the Chinese AI? Is it very good? It uh, is actually, are actually really Chinese users very happy? Yeah, it's their... very good. I've seen some demonstrations of it, uh, and it is it's quite impressive. Um, it is pretty good. Is it the big, big... Chinese companies making them, like Baidu, uh, uh, Tencent, well, well, uh, Alibaba these, or yeah, something? These kind of companies are, are developing the AI solution. Um, so right. there's massive application for that across a whole range of products, as you've seen from, from the robot here, also using some voice AI, Whoa. the speakers using voice AI, the, even the vacuum cleaner is using nice. voice AI. So it has, uh, oh, I'm not gonna, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, I got a turning head. It's got yeah. Uh, it's got kind of eyes that wake up. Um. Ni hao. Hello. I'm just trying to just to say it. It's okay. But uh, so it speaks Chinese only, and I can only say ni hao. So yeah, yeah. it's it's more aimed for kids as kind of a companion. So you can talk to it. You can communicate with it. It'll wake up. Uh, it'll answer questions like you, like you showed it. It can sort of rotate some movement. Um, so yeah, I think a popular product in the future. Nice. Um, so in 2017, we can definitely have an all winter powered robot that's going to bring you beer when you well, want. Well, you can hope so. Yeah. You can hope so? <laughs> you can hope so. I mean, I guess the, some people are very, very busy with this kind of market right now. Um, yeah, like I say, it's, it's a huge market in many areas. Even again in automotive here, uh, there's massive application for voice AI. Um, yeah. Because obviously when you're driving, you don't want to use your hands. You don't want to be sort of fiddling with buttons. Um, so, a lot of these products, as you can see here, is waiting for a voice command prompt. Ni hao, what's the weather? <laughs> do you speak, ni hao, do you speak English? No, so I, I really hope that you have some some, some uh, English speaking English who, that soon you enough can play with. You. Yeah, I hope so too. Then I can also enjoy uh, playing with those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is quite a big market in China for the automotive. Uh, they, they like their gadgets. They like these kind of devices. In the West, maybe not quite as popular. Uh, but these tend to be aftermarket products, so people kind of want to pimp their cars and, and make yeah. them a bit cooler than you, you would buy a product like There's this. like 2 million DD drivers in China yeah, who bought this a lot, Yeah, really, a lot of DD drivers in China. So this for them, like... it's very useful. You can sort of have your little DD um, app running. You can have your little Google Maps running. Nice. And these also connect to like a camera system. So in here, we're using some software for object recognition. Uh, so to help you park, to help recognize objects in the road, also to track the vehicles in front of you, to measure distances and braking distances, and then that information is displayed in real time, really? it's overlaid onto the graphic. Is so it like a, a 360 lens? Is the this I imagine wide? is a 180. 180, yeah? Mm. And, and you have the software that can make you, help you not crash into a car when you park. 
Yeah, so like I say, it's kind of object recognition software that can sort of determine different objects in the real world, judge distances between those objects, uh, and then like I say, overlay that information onto a video. I don't want to get any secrets out of you, but is all we're working on the self-driving car solutions? Uh, <laughs> it, this is the next step, right? <laughs> Somebody might choose to use our processor for that application, but we're not personally focused in the self-driving market. Not yet. Not yet, no. Right. Um, but it's right. a big market, so... That's cool. So it'd be great if when, while you're driving an Uber, it says uh, the customer behind, so they, yeah. they don't have to check the phone. How many yeah. minutes away you are, yeah, all this how much the price is probably going to be, and then you, you, like, it's just up to the apps to support the kind of stuff. It's just Android. Yeah, and, and you can use your voice and, and ask it sort of different things, and it'll bring that information up for you. So if you're driving, obviously safety is a, a priority. These kind of things do help to make your experience a little bit safer when you're in the car. And let's check over here. What do you have over there? Um, so over here is sort of some consumer electronics. Some of these might look a little strange. Do you make all the drones? Uh, we don't make the actual drone. But the chip in there? Yeah, for some, also for our camera chip. Uh, this, I think, doesn't have a camera, but we do make uh, chips for drone cameras and things like that. Obviously, drones are a big market. Uh, a lot of people like using them, uh, especially the video features on those. Because the, the Phantom DJI and stuff, it's, it's kind of amazing what they do. They can like track objects, they yeah. can avoid, uh, they, can, they can follow you, the GPS and all that stuff. Yeah, so you, you It'd can... be cool if you were going in there also. Yeah, I mean, you can see with these technologies, there's a lot of overlap there. So like a lot of the technology in automotive to do with object recognition and distances, you can also apply that technology to things like drones uh, that also rely on, on having to sort of judge that data. It'd be so cool if you could have like as, as many features as a DJI, but <laughs> like for uh, 20 times or 10 times cheaper. That'd be awesome. It would be awesome. Yeah. And you would be the leader. <laughs> you would be the leader. Yeah, DJI are quite good at their job, so I think it's best to let them do what they do best. Okay, and there you have an e-reader chip. This yep. is the dual-core A7. Yeah, so we have a, an e-reader, either dual-core or single-core um, chip. The reason you don't see very high-end processors in e-readers is basically due to the time it takes for the screen to be updated. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of limits how far, how fast you need to yeah. develop the chip for readers. Is the e-reader market very popular in China? Like people love to read, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a little bit popular. There's other applications for these displays. I think in the future, maybe for things like advertising boards, or maybe you go to the train station, you want to look at the schedule, then sort of the e-reader solution is quite good for that kind of uh, application. Also, you. There's a couple of sort of mobile phones and companies that are using e-reader displays, maybe on the reverse side of a phone, uh, because obviously these use a lot less power. Uh, so that's another application for e-readers. Perhaps the main competitor over there is NXP Freescale, and, and you might have some A7 that's like a newer generation and better than what they still provide over there. Cortex-A9, I forgot what it is, but maybe Cortex-A. Yeah, like, like I say, for the e-reader market, the processor speed is not not too important, uh, just because at the moment we're still limited by the e-reader display screens, uh, which if you've ever used an e-reader, they sort of have to refresh. It's not the, the fastest refresh. I hope somebody, uh, maybe at Allwinner or at Google, uh, comes and optimizes Android to really be good for these kind of displays, and, and because you are you support Android, so... Yeah, it's true. So at the moment, like you say, there's not a specific Android platform for the e-reader market. Um, so yeah, maybe that is something that, that we could look at developing. Do you have time? I mean, you have uh, lots of, lots of yeah, priorities too many at projects. Alwinner. Yeah, we just bought out a new uh, an OS called Tina OS, uh, which is for the IoT market. So that's kind of like a lightweight OS uh, for connected devices, uh, maybe for things like smart hardware that we looked at before. And obviously we have the double OS for the two-in-one yeah. tablet devices. So yeah, we're busy. And partnership with Microsoft. Yep. Uh, Optimizing everything for Windows 10 IoT. Yeah, also working on that as well. So there's plenty of going on uh, around uh, sort of that platform and that area. It's going to be an exciting job, right? Yeah, for sure. It's Every exciting. day is new yeah. challenge. Right? Yeah, there's not a dull moment, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, that's what I love about working for Winner. And this is the karaoke screen machines? Yeah, this is very popular in China. I mean, in the West, probably most people wouldn't purchase this kind of thing. But obviously, karaoke in, in Japan, uh, 
In China, it's yeah. quite a big thing. It's kind of people like to go out to KTV. It's called here. Uh, yeah. Sing songs, drink beers, hire your own little private booth. It's That's like it. religion in China. It is a little bit like that. Yeah. So like in England, we go for a beer to the pub. In China, they go to KTV, and and that sort of uh, and sing the culture. Yeah. So these kind of things are popular. People can take them home. They can sing in front of the mirror. Sing in, I don't know. Sing at festivals with their family yeah. or events like that. So, like I said, popular in China, maybe not quite as popular in the West. Is this an open apart lamp or no? Uh, you, this belongs you, to the Marriott Hotel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, you, but you do IoT, IoT is big, big focus? Yeah, unfortunately it's not connected uh, to anything, so it's not a smart lamp. It, it's right. a dumb lamp at the moment. But that's the potential also for your business to put your chips in all the lights, yeah, in all the doors and... Mm. Yeah, that's so that's where it's heading, and things like that, that Wi-Fi speaker over there might be the kind of device that's going to control the lights, that that'll be sort of my gateway into my smart home. Uh, so that's one interesting area, like we have a wireless speaker here. Um, this is also something that, that could support uh, Echo or could support Google Home. Um, that's so awesome. I really hope that you, you, you get onto Google Home and Echo. And this is, it seems like the last uh, keynote by, by Google, they were making it a big focus of their new Pixel phone. Yep. They want everything to be like voice control and smart and stuff. And it's going to be very exciting. This, this 2017 is going to be fun. Yeah, I think even if you look at like the Apple AirPods, uh, if you want to adjust the volume on them, you also have to use the, the Siri voice command. Uh, so uh, it's kind of preparing us for this new era of voice controlled uh, interactivity with devices. So like you said, I think over the next coming years, you're going to see people sort of talking to themselves down the street. Uh, but definitely that integration of voice control into technology is kind of the next step. Uh, like we have wireless technology, this kind of hands-free idea. Now we're moving from that to almost like a touch-free uh, kind of world. So let's say maybe there's some people watching this video, they have ideas, they want to do stuff, you know, they want to do some startup, they, or they maybe have technology, yep. and they want to partner with the owner, they want to work with you, is it possible? How does it work? Yeah, at the moment we're trying to make a, an R-series range of processors. Uh, most of these products over here use our R-series. So that's been used by companies like Chip, uh, Next Things, uh, to make a, a mini PC. We're going to try and make a website to support that, make all the software available, the SDK. Uh, it's going to be public, sort of no NDA or anything like that, to help smaller developers sort of take our processes uh, and develop them into their own application. So that means open source also? Yeah, so that'll be our focus for our R series, will be open source. So we've got a new processor, the R40, uh, that's going to be in Banana Pi, so we're working with Foxconn. Uh, to support Banana Pi. Uh, previously it used our H3 chip, but we're going to move on to the R40. So we, we already have some customers signed up to that. So uh, over the next couple of months, uh, that's going to be our focus, and that's what we're going to be trying to promote within All Winner. Is it also possible for some partners, even some small companies, to kind of like say, hey, All Winner, I want to work with you, and they maybe even come to the office and you know, like work with you, a bunch of engineers, do some new projects, stuff like that? Is that happening? Yeah, I mean, people are always welcome to contact us with their ideas or if they want some sort of support. Sometimes we, we tend to pass customers to maybe an OEM or ODM um, because obviously we provide the, the processor, but we don't actually build any of these products. So all these products on display here uh, are built by different different OEMs, different ODMs. Uh, and normally we work to support them and then they support the customer. If you are a big customer, then we might offer support directly. If you're a small customer and you, you want to know, all right, how do I start my project? Uh, who should I talk to? Then we can give you advice for that. Uh, we, we can also put you in touch with some engineers that maybe have some experience with our solutions and they can also support you. And you had the world's first All Winner Partners Conference. How did that go? Yeah, that was great. That was in uh, Shenzhen uh, about three months ago, we called the uh, APC. So the idea of that was to invite all these different companies, all these technology partners, bring them together uh, and talk about what the focus should be in the future. What's the direction of the industry? What should we be looking at? What should we be building? What should we be manufacturing? Uh, so that, that was kind of the value of that conference. Uh, and also just to show what we're working on, uh, as you can see, it's sort of 
expanding quite an extensive range. We're employing sort of more engineers. Now we have over a thousand people at the company, uh, about 800 of those are engineers. So we're, we're developing IP, we're building our own stuff, our own proprietary software, like the double OS that was developed by us. Um, so we are moving in that direction where we're not just sort of an arm licensee, we are sort of trying to customize, customize uh, like video processing, uh, obviously power management is something that we specialize in. So we try to take the solutions and optimize them uh, and offer the best value we can to the consumer without, if we can avoid it, sort of avoid just adding more hardware that adds more cost. Uh, if you can optimize things in software, then obviously you can pass the benefit onto the consumer. Uh, they're still getting the same experience they would get on a, a more premium platform.